Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. This is the Sunday Filler Fun Day episode. Whoop, whoop. We got a lot of cool stuff to talk about today, uh, but before we get into that, my name is Kevin. My name is Will. And you're here with It Resolves. Little welcome. Intro. Welcome to the fun. What is up, gang? <laughs> we got a lot to go over today. We got some aggro thing, tips and tricks, I guess, for aggro, things yes. to think about. Agro um, principles. We have Agro a, something. a new sponsor Ooh, to talk about. Uh, we're really yes. excited about Stay this. Stay tuned for that. That is that is big <clears> news <throat> for It Resolves. Uh, we've been working on this, I guess, aspect of our show for mm-hmm. a little while. Our brand, would you say? Yeah, our brand and just sort of reaching out into the community a little bit, uh, mm. reaching out to some individual stores and seeing what we can get yeah. with that. So a little more professionally. We are very excited about that. We oh, also, yeah. uh, as I'm sure most of you guys are probably most excited about, uh, new spoilers. We got yeah. some spoilers. So uh, um, we're going to be talking about those. Those, I think, those get spoiled Friday? I don't remember the day. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It was only put up on a website for a short mm-hmm. amount of time and then taken down, but we'll get into all that later. Right, 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 right. First, right. we want to talk to you guys about Patreon. Ah, yes, Patreon. Patreon, Patreon, the lifeblood of a lot of the internet um, content out there right now. Yes. Uh, we are on Patreon now. We have been for a few days. Uh, before we talk about some of the things that we do on Patreon, please don't feel pressured. We're here to be friendly and welcoming. Don't feel pressured <laughs> to throw money at us. Um, we do want to make this channel last a while. We want to make this podcast worthwhile for everybody uh, and just grow and evolve. And we need money to do that in the future. Mm-hmm. We want this channel to fund itself, and that's why we set up a Patreon. Not to, uh, you know, yeah, we're make we're a not book. trying to take money or anything like that. Nah. This the money that we get from Patreon uh, is solely to grow the channel. Um, we yes. just want to make this the best podcast that we can make it and yeah. hopefully build the community in the best ways that we can. And so mm-hmm. with some revenue behind us, hopefully we'll be able to do that in a more effective way, in a more um, engaging way for you guys. Um, yeah. And speaking of engaging, some of the uh, the pledge tiers that we've got uh, provide some engagement with us. Oh, if you yeah. want to play a solid game of magic with us, We've got a tier for that. If you just want to hang out and talk to us a little bit about magic or anything else, uh, we've we've got a tier for that. Uh, yeah. Go check it out. We do appreciate it. But again, don't feel obligated. Uh, we're gonna be keep we're gonna keep doing this uh, no matter what. Uh, yes. It's just hopefully gonna expand what we can do. Yes. In the future, uh, once we get some patrons, we will plug them here. We will. during that intro segment. We'll talk about you. <laughs> we will also have some Patreon specific content come out. We will as soon as we get some patrons. Uh, so. With that out of the way. Guys. Yes. With with the Patreon stuff out of the way, we do come to, again, my favorite name segment. Mm-hmm. I say it every week. The oh, Kiki yeah. Weekly. Oh, uh, buddy. It's so good. Um, <laughs> this week, again, uh, we've had a user suggestion from yeah. Yeah, Proxy yeah. the Goat. Who round two. Is, uh, round two from Proxy the Goat. We really appreciate good your job, involvement man. and your feedback. Um, we greatly uh, enjoyed this combo. Yes, this uh, one is pretty neat. Uh, it is. Take it away, Kev. So it's really kind of a one card thing. Um, it's Primal Surge, which if you don't know what Primal Surge does, it's eight and two green for a sorcery that says, that says exile the top card of your library. And if it's a permanent card, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you do, repeat the process. So the combo that, as suggested, was basically Primal Surge with Permanence, end of story. Right. You get to play your deck. So we gave it a little bit more thought. Mm -hmm. Uh, We wanted to give something a little more specific, and we thought this would be a really interesting combo with Laboratory Maniac. Oh, yeah. Um, So if you don't know, Laboratory Maniac says, uh, if you would draw a card and cannot, when you would normally lose the game, you win the game. You win the game instead. That's the gist. That's the gist. So... Basically, the the idea behind our combo for this was you play Primal Surge, mm-hmm. ideally with Laboratory Maniac, either on the battlefield already or in your deck somewhere. Hiding somewhere. Uh, you play out your deck because everything in it is a permanent. Right. And then on the next draw step, you just win. Yep. Uh, which is pretty cool, and it's very difficult to get to this. That be. I, it sounds yeah. good, but it is very difficult. It's a ten mana card, so yeah, that is that is you're gonna nuts. have to ramp pretty hard. Turbo Ooh, fog yes. primal surge. That I, seems I mean, it could interesting. Well, <laughs> you can't run fog. I was gonna um, say, yeah, that wouldn't really work. Uh, uh, but uh, this is, I think, at its best in something like Commander, probably, uh, where you get a little bit more time to build up and things mm-hmm. like that, and the ramp is a little more 
excessive yeah. we'll say yeah 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 um but a very cool combo again thank you to proxy the goat uh for suggesting it uh, if you have any suggestions for the kiki weekly we'd be happy to uh feature them in this segment again we do this every sunday um so just leave it in the comment section and we'll we'll uh we'll throw it up there yeah we'll talk about we'll it we'll talk bit. about it <laughs> okay sweet that's a good kiki weekly man yeah i like that one that was good all right well we're gonna run on to the to the main topic. What do you say, Kev? Are you ready to I think it's adventure time. with me? I think. All right. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. I didn't do any research on this. This nope. is all you. This is me, man. Ah, so I like to go dig around old uh, magic articles, old magic websites, and just see what I can get. Some some hidden gems. I hop on my treasure cruise and I just go. So <laughs> nice, right? <laughs> uh, I've been saving that for three weeks now. No, I'm just kidding. Would you say you dig through time to find some of these articles? Sure, man. You better think twice about that one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh, uh, we right. have some. We have some good brainstorming segments. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're gonna stop right there. Uh, uh, we are time not... to stop. Time stop. If that's a card, this is good. Time I... stop is a card. I'm gonna break your nose. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm getting derailed. Uh, so, if you'll flash back a little bit here. Um, We're going to talk about a main topic. (laughs) We've spoiled it in the beginning. Aggro principles, even though every card we just said is like a, you know, a (laughs) card draw thing. (laughs) Yeah. That's fine. Completely not aggro. Um, So aggro is a style of magic that is kind of, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. a little bit uh, confused with a very simple deck. Okay. And while I will admit aggro is probably one of the easiest ways to play magic, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to agree. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Just bear with me. Uh, there are some considerations that you need to have as an aggro player. Okay. Some nuances if you want to be competitive, okay. we'll say. Okay. So we're going to go We're gonna go into some of those. I wrote a list, top five. <coughs> Gesundheit. Excuse me. Top five <laughs> aggro principles to keep in mind when you're playing and building aggro decks. Okay. Let's jump into it. I'm excited. So my first one, Kev, is understand the value of pressure. Pressure is Kev- important. Pressure is important, especially in an aggro deck, especially yes. when you're trying to win and compete. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> very few times you are not going to attack, right? You are yeah. not going to tip your cards and, and yeah, swing at face. I would I would 100% agree, as that is sort mm. of the definition of aggro. You're right. So that that is like bare out there, just yeah. a simple... Almost killed Maybe our mic. Maybe don't hit the mic. Well, <laughs> it made a face at me. I had to pressure it a bit. That was really smooth. Thank you. Continue. All Please right. Continue. All right, all right, all right, all right. So that is the <laughs> the easiest form of pressure, as you're just going to attack and get guys out there, right? Yeah. But there's a few other ones I started thinking about. Um, so there's board state pressure. Mm-hmm. It's just flooding the board with things. You know, if they if they are holding a card that maybe they want to use on one fatty on one. Um, goblin guide or something like that mm-hmm. and boom there's a second goblin guide and then boom there's a swift spear <clears throat> yeah now they have all these other answers that they have to contend with they have these things that they need to to deal with mm-hmm. so that's a form of pressure um another form of pressure i thought about uh is once they get below 10 life and you're holding cards in their hand or in your hand rather they are scared of one thing yes yes that's burn baby burn is the best thing for an aggro deck so every top deck that an aggro deck pulls is terrifying yeah Right, and I think um, to sort of jump back just a little bit to your point of putting out more goblin guides, more mm, Swiss spears, mm, mm. more whatever. Um, the idea here is in an aggro deck is really to diversify threats. Generally, mm. I'm not going to say every right. single time, but uh, especially for something like a red deck wins, you're exactly exactly right. Turn one, you play a Swiss spear or goblin guide. Turn two, you get two more of those. Yeah. Turn three two more in a burn spell or something like that you're just piling on damage but also diversifying the damage and that way when they do have that fatal push or that lightning bolt to deal with one of your creatures you've got two or three more by the time they can deal with it yeah Um, their their removal spells aren't as good at that point because exactly they're dealing with two points of damage but there's right identical forms um and that's where the board pressure is really built is Mm -hmm. by having just tons of those little guys yeah and uh especially good card for that uh would be strangler root where he comes back yeah the persist and the fact that he has haste uh is very effective haste is one of the best abilities for an aggro deck just getting the damage as quickly as you can that's all it really amounts to speaking (laughs) of that all right so the tools for pressure i wrote down uh the first one is haste 
Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, weird. It's immediately the two types of pressure right there. As soon as he comes in, he's swinging. Yep. And that's just another threat on the board. Exactly. So when you're building an aggro deck, um, don't count out haste. Right. Yep. I think in in most other decks, haste is just kind of it's nice, but you don't really look for creatures with haste. I think you're right. Um, haste is one of those abilities I think that gets mm-hmm. overlooked a little bit. Um, yeah. Generally, not in a red deck win style thing, but sure. um, in most decks, haste just doesn't do what you really need it to do. Right. Um, because you're not just trying to pile on damage immediately. Mm-hmm. You're trying to build some sort of a an advantage, whether it be card advantage, tempo, something like that. Definitely. Whereas with an aggro deck, you literally just need mm-hmm. to deal damage as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. And if your threat gets killed, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. There's more. <laughs> yeah, there's um, more. Uh, the second uh, was Trample and First Strike. So those are important yes. when applying pressures because they make combat uh, less profitable for your opponent. So mm. Trample, of course, being any leftover damage that would be there just falls onto your opponent. Just spills right <laughs> over that creature. They trample over that creature. <laughs> uh, and First Strike being uh, they apply their damage first before yes. the other creature gets to touch them, gets around death touch, uh, kills little guys. Um, without risking your creature in most cases. Yeah. And that's great just because they're, like I said, their blocks are unprofitable where they might have traded in combat. Mm-hmm. Now you keep your thing. So they might have to think about blocking something else. Right. You know, or just eating it. Yeah. So it yeah. depends there. Um, so different abilities <laughs> like that really, really affect an aggro deck. What do yeah. you say, Kev? Yeah. I would definitely say evergreen effects like that are very important. Say evergreen? Aggro. Yeah. That's a new phrase for me. Is it really? It is. Um, evergreen meaning that they uh, span a multitude of sets and they stick around for a while. So like haste oh. is a is an evergreen effect okay. because it's not it's not going away anytime soon. Something like not. the forest walk or island walk stuff is not a thing anymore, so it's right. not technically an evergreen. I believe I'm correct in that. I like that. Um, yeah. That's neat. Learn well, something every day. A little tip of the day from It Resolves. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. That, oh, all right. That's cool. Yeah. I'll tuck that away for later. <laughs> uh, so when applying pressure, some things that can help you get there uh, are combat tricks. Um, but combat tricks are not my favorite form of kind of boosts, I guess, yeah. for that pressure. So combat tricks are a one-time, one-up thing. Um, something that comes to mind is like giant growth or, mm-hmm. or uh, giant strength or titan strength is what yeah. I'm thinking of. Where um, you give a thing extra power for a turn, and then that's it. And uh, one of the big ones right now, I think, that's seeing a lot of play in Atarka Red uh, in something like Modern is Mutagenic Growth. Yeah. Um, the reason being, it's like the perfect combat trick for that deck. It's only plus two, plus two, which is significant, but it's not like huge. Sure. Um, but the fact that you can play it for free is really important in that deck. Yeah. I say free, you pay two life, but when you're playing an aggro deck, you generally don't care about your life. No. Um, it mm-hmm. just sort of doesn't matter because you're just trying to race. So like yeah. you will get there first. Um, but something like mutagenic growth is almost an auto include in a lot of the Atarka red decks solely because you can play, if you've only got one mana open, you can play a goblin guide, swing in with it and still get to mutagenic growth mm-hmm. in addition to so even if you get, you know, hosed on lands or something like that, you still have that combat trick available to yeah. you and you can still poke through for an extra couple of sure, damage. Sure, sure. And those are great. But again, that's a, that is a one-time <laughs> yeah, effect, right? Yeah. So uh, you could use it to win combat over a creature. You could use it if you're trying to be a little defensive, which you really don't want to be. If you're in that spot, then you're in a bad spot. Yes. With an aggro deck. Right. But you could turn the tide. You could. Effectively. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, however... Uh, spells that I think work better than combat tricks, and Kevin, we might disagree, but that's fine. Uh, I like auras better than combat tricks, specifically things like madcap skills. Madcap skills is nuts. I do in certain situations. Um, the reason I say that, uh, so for a format like modern, mm. when you're playing an aura or like some sort of enchant creature, whatever, um, you generally you're using up your mana just to yep. buff one creature which sort of goes against the premise of diversifying threats sure um which isn't a bad strategy i think that has has its place it's better against you know certain decks where you're just trying to get through for mm-hmm. with one creature and if you're against a control deck or something like that that just doesn't have creatures it's kind of good to pile on that stuff sure and then still have a backup creature maybe waiting in the wings or something but like generally um i'm not as big a fan as as you are probably with those i will say though during the return to ravnica block 
uh, Madcap skills was quite was good. Great. There was a Rakdos aggro deck, well, a budget deck actually, that just mm-hmm. played like, what was it? Rakdos shred freaks and uh, cacklers yep. and things cacklers, like that, and just like uh, piled on auras. The <laughs> uh, desecration demon. Yeah. Um, just cheap guys. Cheap guys, and then buff them and stuff. make them hard to block. And yeah. that's where I think the auras probably have a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, leverage. Is that they like madcap skill specifically adds basically menace to your creature yeah. while plus giving three, it plus, plus three and plus menace. O. Oh, that's uh, and that's only two mana. Yeah. Granted, basically what you're think what the trade off in my mind is mm-hmm. turn one, say you play your goblin guide or your your one drop creature, sure. swing in, whatever. Turn two, would you rather play two more haste creatures or one singular madcap skills? That's sort of the trade off in my mind. Yeah. And that's why I prefer to go for the creatures route because mm-hmm. you're potentially getting more power on the board and not sticking it all in one sort of basket. Well, here's what I would do. Okay. Is I would wait okay. to play your madcap skills. Yeah, yeah. So you flood the board first. So on turn two, after turn one, you've laid down two cards. You mm-hmm. know, land Goblin Guide. You're down to five if you're on the play. Yeah. You know, up to six, you draw a card. You lay another land, down back to five. You play two more creatures. Now you've got three cards in your hand. Mm-hmm. By about turn four... You might be out of options, and you might only be holding madcap skills. Yeah. But you might be up so far ahead that madcap skills is just like, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back, right? I think, so I, I, again, I see, but I think I might disagree. And that I would prefer something that gets me more cards over a madcap skills. Ah, but not in an aggro deck. Uh, Those just don't. Something like... Uh, not in an aggro deck, most likely, no. but something like a like a faithless looting to discard a couple extra lands not and an get into deck. something. I'm just that's, saying. I'm just saying it's not an aggro deck, dude. I'm just telling you. That's fine. That's fine. I'm, but I'm those just don't. Those you. just don't go into aggro. Decks. Just play violent outburst and cascade. And I everything. mean, you should. Yes. <laughs> um, definitely. Yeah, that happened yeah. really. <laughs> in so the casual those decks. are those are <laughs> other combat tricks and things for aggro <laughs> decks that. Yeah. As a whole nother aspect yeah. is getting more more That's things. That's two for one. That's why Bloodbright Elf is banned in some formats. It's yeah, it's definitely not in the picture for modern because no. it was too good. Yeah, I mean it. It had haste. Oh my it God. dealt three damage the turn it came down, and you got another creature oh, out of it. Potentially, potentially, <laughs> or anything you know, else. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Bloodbright is. You could cascade into Violent Outburst. Yeah. In fact. In our casual games a couple happened. weeks ago, yeah. I I did cascade into yeah. Violent Outburst. I got two Cascade triggers. Yeah. And I think oh, my second man. Cascade was into like Strangle Root or something. So I got yeah. five power on the board plus basically two. Yep. So seven yep. power on the board. It was that um, could haste and attack in. It was a lot. Yeah. It worked it, well. It, it was a lot. <laughs> so yeah, those those are some things to think about. Is there's uh you can add subtle pressures like that yeah. in your combat tricks, in your in your auras, depending on how you want to build your deck. Mm-hmm. Um, takeaways, of course, are that auras and combat tricks aren't more threats, necessarily. Right. You have to have something that they go on in effect for right. them to be useful. Okay, uh, the second point I'm going to make. Kill, kill, kill. Kill everything. The elves. <laughs> Kevin laughs. laughs. Hear me out. No, you're right. So, what is an elf, Kev? A mana dork. And other things. Okay. Any creature that enables a deck to do its function okay. is the elf in that deck. Um, some things like uh, Enclave Cryptologist. I don't so, even know what that does. Uh, it is uh, a level card, right? Oh. So uh, it's not a particularly strong one, but mm-hmm. uh, it just gets you cards, right? It's just okay. a tap, draw a card for free. Oh, okay. So one big way a deck can overcome an aggro deck specifically like a, a gruel or a red deck wins is it just draws into its things right because yeah. you're not going to go up on card <laughs> advantage so any card advantage they have is essentially way better yeah right anytime they get to draw more cards you don't um so killing that thing kind of locking them to the top of their deck mm-hmm. it's a big advantage um some other things like um uh blanked on her name she's got bolster one she's a two two she's white and offensa? yeah and offensa. if they're running a Gotcha. Thanks, bud. <laughs> an ETB deck. Yeah. And Offense is out there making stuff bigger. If you can bolt and Offense and get her away, that kind of evens the board for you. Yeah. Right. And that ties into your 
your uh, comment earlier that burn is sort of a key thing mm. for an aggro deck because totally. you don't have to hit the player to the face, although that sometimes is the right answer. Sure. Um, this helps you deal with the Anafenzas, the Birds of Paradise, mm-hmm. or the, the Mana Dorks of any kind, mm-hmm. really. Um, bolts, stuff like that, hits Noble Hierarch, which is really mm-hmm. important. Um, yep. And you can really just get all of these things off the board and hopefully keep them off of making their plays is yeah. really what you're looking to Yeah, do. and the Mana Dorks, again, of course there's, those are Elves. Those are important to kill, too. Yeah. Um, because if they're trying to ramp into something big, that will beat all of your creatures, you know, you I'd want like to, to go on them. a tangent real quick. Bring it on, buddy. I know we do this all the time. It's fun. Hey, I'm but here here's to the thing, enjoy guys. the ride. I've seen this before. Okay. I'll play a mana dork. Somebody considers not killing it. Always kill the mana dork. Yeah, really. Just do <laughs> Ser- it. And I'm talking specifically just the mana dorks, okay. not like any of the other stuff that we're talking about now. Sure. <laughs> mana dorks need to be killed i don't know who started the rumor that you should let a mana dork live you should not uh-uh that is the engine for the deck yes <laughs> always if kill you, the mana dorks and we'll talk about the importance of dorks i think monday because i've got a cool deck plan for a monday oh okay but yes always if, kill them just think about simple math for a moment here yeah guys so turn one noble hierarch uh, Elvish Mystic, Land of War, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. On turn two, they've got three mana they can get to. They got to turn ahead yeah. very quickly. What if they've got another dork? Yeah. that That's nuts. Yeah. And uh, something else, when you're building a deck with mana dorks, a lot of the times, and this is a whole other, this could be a whole other episode, it may be in the future. When mm-hmm. you build a deck with mana dorks in it you consider that when you're creating your deck list specifically your two and three drop slots Mm -hmm. so when you have say four to eight mana dorks you need less two drops and more three drops because you're going to be on turn three earlier than you will be normally right um so it's more efficient to be on turn three and Mm -hmm. have those three drops things like eternal witness or you know something along those lines i believe kitchen finks is a three drop it is um Things like that are more important than a two drop when you have those mana dorks because you're most often going to be on turn three, actually on turn two. And so it could be that by killing their mana dork, you just took them off of a turn because they could play land but not have any plays because they probably don't have a two drop. I'm not saying never. A lot of decks will run some just to be safe. Things like scavenging ooze and stuff will always get played. But like totally they're less likely to have a two drop than they are a three drop. So to yep. take them off of that puts them a turn back, and that's important. That's a free turn of damage. Yes. That's a free turn of bolting their head. Yes. Whatever you need. Always kill the mana dork. Please do. Always. Please do. Um, something I wrote here just to tack on is you will be implementing your strategy every turn. Yes. That's simply tip your guys and send them forward. Yes. That's it. Keep them catching up. Keep them off of their strategy, whatever that is. And so their elves, their their engines are going to be there, you mm-hmm. know, what makes them go. And if you can kill it, always do it. Yeah. Nine times out of ten. Ten times out of ten. Ten times out of ten, if you can. Yeah, definitely. Uh, number three is bet on them not having it. Yeah. It being the counter, the removal, yeah. the sweeper, whatever it is. So in your aggro deck, you are not going to run answers to a counter spell. You're yeah. not going to run other counters. You're not going to run usually no graveyard recursion, Mm-mm. right? So all you want to do is play your guy and attack. Yep. And that's really it. Um, more often than not, they won't have that thing. I'm not yeah. saying never. You are going to run into a supreme verdict oh, yeah. here and there, some kind of sweeper. It's going to happen, <clears throat> but your game plan is just to deal the damage, right? Yep. And so you need to stick. The only way your deck is going to win is by sticking in that damage. Mm-hmm. And so you have to risk it. Um, to get the biscuit, the biscuit. Uh, <laughs> and it may turn out that there's mm. you know you run into a counter spell you run into a sweep or something oh, like that oh you totally will um you and totally in will. times where you don't need to like over commit to a board um i think it's worth noting that you know if you've got four aggro creatures out presenting lethal next turn swing with them first mm-hmm. don't just throw out your your other haster just to sure. get in a couple extra damage because that's just not a smart play they could very easily you know do that's something true. there that's true um so think it through but 
your game plan is to swing in and attack so just do it yeah if it doesn't work you got another turn to do it if it doesn't work then you might have lost the game but that was your game plan like, yeah yeah that's all you've got yeah so. you need to you need to understand that very <laughs> simply your game plan is not going to be too complicated no i said it was complicated making and playing <clears throat> aggro decks and there's a lot of things to consider but the core strategy of attacking that's always going to be simple yep right um so keep it simple bet that they don't have the answer make them have it yeah you know make them hold force that their hand exactly uh point four is that mana curve matters yes in an aggro deck so you are going to run few lands a lot of threats in yeah. an aggro deck so you can't realistically run something like um i, I don't know a hydra or whatever <laughs> you know no uh, don't run a hydra <laughs> huh um unless i guess it's ramp aggro that's totally different well but, maybe but, yeah. but 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 in your simple like green red mono red don't run that mm -hmm. sort of stuff um there's a guy named jay schneider who kind of popularized and thought about the mana curve in uh i think a really beneficial way uh to the rest of us um so he's listed up to uh four mana the amount of things that you want to have in your deck and this isn't oh, that's good yeah and it's it's not always like you know set in stone no, you can change it not. you can run a five drop if mm -hmm. it's you know really good if you if it's beneficial like it. to your strategy yeah. right but, but in a perfect in the perfect world and the perfect mm -hmm. aggro deck you really don't want to stray too much from this principle this just kind of works uh so for one drops nine to thirteen is what you're looking at two drops six to eight three drops three to five four drops one to three okay kind of that mix of creatures of permanence mm -hmm. um x spells things like fireball like bane fire you really want one to three mm -hmm. just because if you know, if you're going to make Banefire better than Fireball, mm -hmm. you have to be at turn five. Yeah. And if you haven't won or be presenting lethal at turn five, you might not be winning. Yeah. Right? Um, direct damage spells like Bolts, Shocks, Incinerate, that stuff, you can run about ten. Okay. Ten of those. Um, this is a, just a really a good curve for yeah, aggro decks. sort of a templated curve. Yeah. And it, it, it survived for a long time in Magic, really... Um, when they were playing in alpha all the way through um oh, what was that set with the arabian knights maybe that's what i'm thinking of i don't know what you're thinking of i don't remember what's the set with the little sword that's arabian knights that's it look at me let me know what's <laughs> i'm stuff. so proud of you thanks <laughs> after the show i'm gonna eat a cookie <laughs> but yeah uh what? What? cookies right. are great that's what all you right. get when you do good stuff yeah we gotta go get a cookie for will now <laughs> You have any cookies? I don't have any cookies. Ah, I hate this place. <laughs> I'm leaving it. Results. Record in a dungeon <laughs> with no cookies. <laughs> the cookie-less dungeon. There's no snacks. That'd be the that's the new name of our recording studio. <laughs> Snackless dungeon. <laughs> the cookie-less dungeon. Uh, we are minutes from a Publix. I say minutes, like literally two. <laughs> we could walk there. We could walk there. I'm not walking there. I'm not either. I don't really want to cookie that badly oh well, good i earned it but i'll save it for later <laughs> kevin tangents yeah mana curve is important that's what i'm trying important. to say uh yeah you just can't pack in too many big things in your deck because you're Correct. just trying to win super super quick yeah, yeah. um you are essentially in, in to jay's point you're going to be using all of your mana every turn in a yeah. mono red deck especially uh i'll say in red green you'll be using <laughs> most of it you have yeah. more combat tricks in green that you might want to hold up but you know i think um so the overall feel of this is like like you said you're supposed to be running minimal lands not mm -hmm. no lands but minimal lands right. because basically what you want to be doing is have a couple lands out and be drawing as many threats mm -hmm. as you possibly can so if you draw a land or to the mana curve point if you draw something like a five drop you're just it's a dead card really the land's yeah. not so much but like a five drop is just a dead card most of the time hopefully you've won by the time you can play it definitely and if you haven't it better be a really good five drop to get yeah. you out of that game. Yeah, no um, like it. Ooh, it's drag just dusk would come to mind actually. Well, yeah, but, but like you're just wanting to get some threats out, swing in, burn them out, do whatever you have to do. Sure. Hopefully, win like within the first few turns. If mm -hmm. you can't, that might not be the best. It's it a little hairy. It's yeah. a little dicey. I'm not saying you can't win after that. Obviously, no, 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 no. You no, can grind no. out a game pretty. Magic pretty well, is but... great in that a lot of things can happen. Yeah. Um, you could not draw any land. 
you could jar only land, mm-hmm. both of which will screw you up, and both of which <laughs> has happened to everybody. Yeah. Um, you could just not draw your combo pieces, mm-hmm. right? You could not draw threats. So many things can happen because yeah. magic is such a, while it's it's dependent on skill, on planning, on uh, knowledge of the game itself, of the metagame, it's really all determined by like randomness right? it's about luck as well yeah. it's about strategy mm-hmm. and luck and um that's actually something that richard garfield the original creator hmm. of magic i read this in an article somewhere um okay. he wanted this to be like poker basically where mm. you okay. have to have the skill you have to have the knowledge you have to know what you're doing but at the same time there's still that that sort of luck aspect drilled into that premise that yeah. you're not you know, you can be the best player in the world, but if you don't draw lands, you just lose. You know yeah, what I mean? That's like, fair. And so he wanted that luck aspect to be in there along with the strategy. That way, everybody felt like it was somewhat fair, you know, that yeah. people could win games against a pro player or somebody sure. could win a game against their friend who has just a great deck and maybe their deck's maybe not as well built or sure. something like that. But he still wanted to reward the people who took the time, took the Mm -hmm. effort to build that strategy up and do the best they could to make their deck and things like that. So um, I think Magic does a great job of that. uh, Absolutely. Always has. It's genius. Um, Except during Affinity Years. We don't talk about those. We don't talk about those. (laughs) Moving on from Mana Curve. Saying goodbye to that. Number five. Uh, It is called More Than Four. This is my point. More Than Four. Uh, Agar is pretty simple. Uh, since it's pretty simple, you were going to have a lot of things like Lightning Bolt that say deal three damage to target creature or player. There are a ton of other spells that do that. Yes. Right? So you've got Matt, or you've got uh, Bolt and Incinerate, I'll say specifically. Incinerate, one colorless, one red, deal three damage to target creature or player, cannot be regenerated. You know, not as good as Bolt, but I told Kevin before the show, three damage is always three damage. Yep. So you could have more bolts essentially Mm -hmm. in your deck you're gonna have plenty of cards that do the things you want to do you can throw in other effects right Mm -hmm. um you can run four goblin guides also run some swift spears or boros legionnaire i don't think that's the name of the card i'm thinking of is the little goblin that's that's the one i mean you know right yeah it is I mean, you wouldn't run it over like Swift Spear or something, but I mean, it's in a few red <laughs> No, decks, you wouldn't right? run it. It's uh, not a bad card, though. No, no, no. His battalion's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but there you are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's really it. Well, I think those are some good, just food for thought points. Uh, if you're building an aggro deck out there, it's a really good way to start uh, learning magic. It's also Definitely. a really good way to intro a format that generally is more expensive. Um, something like Fun. modern red decks are... I mean, they're not super cheap, but they're, in respect to other decks, very cheap. Yeah, comparatively, um, definitely. So, I mean, you got some pricey cards in the in the way of Goblin Guide and things like that, but um, generally, it's a fairly cheap deck to build, and it's also just a really easy deck. Not easy, but fairly easy deck to pilot. Um, and it's, it's just a really good way to learn how to play the game and learn yeah. about those interactions and how to play against other decks. And... Um, you know, see what points you can come up with. See if these points helped you uh, if you build yeah. a red deck or a, a, an aggro deck of yeah. any kind. They're also just kind of fun to play. Yeah. Um, n- probably not for everybody, but, no. you know, I enjoy just putting guys down. and Some, There's you know. something really... N- I, I'm generally a control pl- a control player. Good job. I know, how, I know how to talk sometimes. Well, I was waiting <laughs> for you. Um, it takes a while. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to make you prove it. Uh, generally, I play control, so aggro is not like my my uh, forte, I guess I would say. Okay. But when we did play our casual games and I got Gruel Colors Whew. and played Bloodbraid Elf and you know Violent Outburst, yeah. Goblin Guides, uh, stuff like that. It was that, a great deck. It felt good. Yeah. The wins felt really nice, to be honest. Yeah, and it's fun to win with an aggro deck. Yeah. Uh, I played against plenty of them at FNMs. I played one at an FNM. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, won a few yeah. games, not as many as I'd like. But, <laughs> uh, but it was still fun. Um, so yeah, well, I wanted to talk about aggro. Revive well, the topic. I like I aggro. It's a good good topic. Um, moving off of our main topic, uh, we move into spoilers. Probably the reason a lot of people would click on this video. Um, yes, yes, yes spoilers for hour of devastation i believe they were put up on it was like a french website or something like that it was a magic 
website but yeah they posted it up for a few minutes and then realized and said hey we should take that down so they did but a few minutes was enough for the world to go crazy uh, well rightfully so. rightfully so uh, uh we got two very good planeswalkers well one amazing planeswalker for yeah. sure um and then a very good wrath effect so, so why don't you lead us about, into it let's actually talk about the wrath first i think that's going to be less complicated for everybody and probably the most agreed upon card here um it should be noted that spoilers have been wrong in the past. Leaks yes. have been wrong in the past. But this was leaked reportedly this from Wizards from website. From Magic. Or from Wizards. Yeah. Right. Reportedly. So we'll see. Um I was thinking there is a special set coming out where Bolus is the bad guy. Oh, right? Arch Enemy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the new Arch Enemy set. So this might be a promo for that. I don't know. I doubt it. Speculation. I see. I do too. But there's always it a has chance. the same set symbol as the wrath, yeah. and Bantu is going to be in the. I could put that on anything, dude. I'm just telling you. I know. I looked at these, but there's always. I'm just saying. Always a chance. But let's talk about it. Okay. Let's talk about these anyway. Uh, Bantu's last reckoning is two black, one colorless sorcery that says destroy all creatures. Lands you control. <laughs> don't untap during your next untap step amazing yeah this holy is holy crap this it's is amazing sweeper standard needs. um it's this is that... yeah this is a sweeper that black needs specifically <laughs> sure, yeah. um god it's yeah. being compared most often that i've seen to damnation uh which yeah, is just okay. a four mana wrath basically it doesn't have the downside of not untapping during the next uh turn but um this is just amazingly That's efficient so good um, yeah it I... nerfs aggro decks <laughs> like by turn three, they're hoping to deal some of those final points of damage. If you just wrath, <laughs> like they have just lost everything. Yep. Um. So this is amazing to me. I think. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think it's great. <laughs> um. You know, <laughs> when you play this, it's it might not always be on turn three. Um, yeah. You may be able to keep some mana open. Mm-hmm. Um. And you could, um, main phase two drop another land to have one up or something. Absolutely. Um. But that is that is a significant downside. Mm-hmm. However. When you play this, you're probably not too upset about clearing a board. Right. And, you know, not having any mana for the next turn. Yeah. Probably not. I'll this say. This is a very efficient way to dig you out of a tough yeah. situation. Definitely. That I see. Um, Definitely. I like it quite a lot. Um, It doesn't really beat Scrap Heap Scrounger, I'll say. No. Uh, I don't think it beats Zombies either. Cards that can come back. Yeah, the recursion in Zombies is just pretty good. Yeah. So. Um, but I mean, this is still this is fantastic. Yeah, it's an auto include I think in black decks. Uh, any control forward. deck is gonna love this. Also, yeah. I mean, it's just an efficient wrath, which is what we need. I mean, we've got things like fumigate uh, right now True. in white, which is a, a wrath effect. But this is one. just so much more efficient. <laughs> yeah, um, you're right. It's just insane. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's All move right. on, Kit. Uh, we are going to talk about not bolus next. Uh, Compolis. We're gonna tease that a little. Save it for the end. <laughs> Samut the Tested. Now this one is probably the more debated, I guess, one from yeah the spoilers uh, to see if it's good or not. Um, I don't think it's very good. <laughs> I, I'm really on the fence. I think, given the rest of the set, we will really see. That's fair. You know, standalone the other two, we have a pretty clear idea of how yeah. good they are. Um, given the rest of uh, our devastation Samut might get a lot better i think this is and supposed to be does. i think it's supposed to be a large set too like one uh, of the bigger I ones so so there's gonna be a lot of there's a, a lot, lot of cards in, in here there's yeah. a lot of changes that are going to be happening so maybe we'll see this get some upgrades but maybe as it maybe. stands now it's plus uh one mm-hmm. uh basically just gives a creature double strike which is fine if you're already in a winning position <sighs> yeah it, it really... just doesn't protects itself very yeah. well it loses it at the end of the turn so it really doesn't matter yeah. and if you're giving it double strike you're probably attacking with it so like we'll say it's not going to be a blocker anyway no but a life linker you know i mean you know you can back. get some stuff there but swing like back. um just generally it's, it doesn't do the best yeah thing. it's still not great it's minus seven is great but you're never going to get to the minus seven not in you're standard probably not going to get to that uh, the tested, mm. it's minus two as it deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two target creatures or players. So it's this literally is, forked bolt. Yeah, this is the the one ability that protects it. Is yeah, it could ping two things and get rid of them or one thing. But I mean, I think most often what you'll <laughs> the sequence that you'll see with this if it does get some play, you'll bring it in. You'll be able to minus two, hopefully deal with a threat. Um, 
yeah. or two small threats. I mean, nothing. It's not going to hit anything amazing, right? No, um, God no. It could finish off something. It could but... if you swing in first, second main, play this. Maybe you can deal, get something off the board. Um, so I think that's most often the first turn that you play is yeah. that's going to be what you do probably. And then hopefully, uh, if the board stays relatively clear, you can plus double strike, get right. some damage in. Um, but, but then if you want to really yeah and if you want to get to your old after that it's five turns you have to wait you got a there. long way to go right the old is really good though search it's your, amazing search your library for up to two creatures and or planeswalker cards put them onto the battlefield then shuffle your library it's literally a strict upgrade to tooth and nail god it's a court of calling like yeah it's fantastic um it hits creatures and planeswalkers which i think is important yes um, that's great that's really good i think this has the potential in like a, in something like a doubling season deck mm. uh obviously not in the standard but like a modern doubling season deck to just be able to go get more stuff to, yeah. like the, as soon as you play it like that's I mean, amazing that, that would be great yeah that's um, the ideal though right like maybe in some kind of rug deck that can protect this better maybe it so. might make it around but maybe again i, I mean i'm with kevin as it stands right now <laughs> I'm not crazy about it. This, to me, has potential, but it all hinges on what else is in the set. Yeah, um, for sure. It's still fun. It's it still is a cool, cool one. Yeah. Um, the art's really good. I think, you know, Red Green really doesn't have amazing Planeswalkers and hasn't ever gotten them, really. <laughs> it really doesn't. Know? I mean, uh, Domery Raid saw yeah. a little play in yeah. Standard, I think. Uh, so did... And um, maybe in Modern with Kessig Wolf Run um, who's... by uh, Brian Kibler, I think. Who's the satyr that does bad stuff? It's a god. Xenagos. Yeah, he was in standard. Um, he, yeah. he made some waves in standard, but... But he, uh, he did a better job of protecting himself because he, made, he, made, some lo- he yeah. made a blocker, yeah. right? Um, he also ramped you into things, which was great. Yeah. But like, even that, which was probably one of the better green-red planeswalkers, mm-hmm. yeah. didn't get like a huge amount of, yeah. of play. He's probably my favorite one. I like them, I like Xenagos quite a lot. He's fun. Um, uh, all right. There's the moment one, everybody's been waiting for. There's one more. <laughs> Kevin, Nickel Bolas. You know how we uh, we talked about this like a couple episodes ago? I remember. Were like, hey, there's a chance he's not going to be in the set. And no, I was no, like, no, nah, man. I said, what if he's not? I beg the question. I didn't say there's a chance. I there mean, is I, Maybe no I question. did. Maybe I did. But There was no question, and this Look, just proves it. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't yet. Again. No, it proves it. All right. All it's right. It's happening. It's real. There's a point... No I will 1%. say, I will say that the this planeswalker seems a little unreal. Just and how, how good, good it is! is. <laughs> this is like the best. It's a little insane. This might make a run for best planeswalker. Above it's case. too expensive. You can cheat out planeswalkers you now, can, like a mofo, but... and we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> uh, but yeah. no, this, I don't look at. This I think thing. by itself, it's not. It's just no, not. no, sure. Um, but but it's a build. Come on, it's uh, it's a seven drop. Needs to be said. Yeah. Plus two target opponent exiles cards from the top of his or her library until he or she exiles a non-land card. Until end of turn, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Just steal a thing. <laughs> a thing, but <laughs> it literally could anything. be so much more. That's amazing. Until until you find a <laughs> land. <laughs> All right, I've got these three permanents I get to choose. <laughs> it's <laughs> really good. Everything else you just lose. Yeah. Oh my god, it's not even in the graveyard. It's exiled. Oh, yeah. It's disgusting. Uh, there's nothing more to say. How good is that? <laughs> it's plus one. Each opponent exiles two cards from his or her hand. You know, if you've played this, let's say turn seven. Yeah. They're probably not holding much. No, but you get to take their hand. Yeah, it could um, be their whole hand. And that's the thing, too. Late game, which is when you'd most likely be playing this, um, unless, again, you cheat it out somehow, which we'll talk about. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, most of the time you're going to be playing this late game, which means they're probably either holding on to a couple lands or a couple spells that maybe they're hoping to cast a late game, like a bomb or something like that, to just make them not have that anymore. (laughs) Oh, that's (laughs) so mean. Seems pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, It's minus four ability, Kev. Yep. Nicol Bolas, the God Pharaoh, <laughs> deals seven damage to target opponent or creature and opponent controls. Can I um bring oh. up some some flavor that I like about this that Please. I don't know if you realized? It's go ahead. Uh, it's minus two deals how much damage? It's minus two. Yeah, minus, the one or minus, minus four, four. I'm sorry. Seven. Uh, how much loyalty? Seven. 
What's his casting cost? Seven. It's a seven, seven, seven planeswalker. It's God. the God Pharaoh. <laughs> I mean, there you go. Like that's really good synergy. They finally made up for Grizzlebrand. Oh, uh, after all this time. <laughs> after all this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah uh that's just fantastic seven damage God. and you get to activate that as soon as it comes into play yeah so if they're down on life you just nerf them for seven. <laughs> oh man that's crazy that's you might so kill good. them for seven depending. you can kill them you that's kill almost s- half your, of you your starting so life total. <laughs> and it says no it says opponent i was gonna say it's playing blockers too but no, oh, it's well, opponent yeah that would have been nuts but yeah. still oh man it's good it's fantastic. What's uh, the minus 12? It's minus 12. Exile each non-land permanent <laughs> your opponent controls. Just, you don't get to play. <laughs> you lose like, everything. <laughs> it just flips their side of the board over. <laughs> Have fun with your lands. Yeah, enjoy that. You um, can make a bunch of mana to watch it fizzle away. <laughs> if mana burn was a thing. Um, <laughs> well. Yeah, so this is amazing um again it is a seven drop which is high for a planeswalker but it's nickel bolus man like it's gotta be let's um, talk about that and let's second. talk about let's... the cheating it out so we mentioned in our last episode the friday episode that yeah. ulamog's going away yeah well, what kevin what i'm racking my brain help me what what can marvel look for once ulamog's well, you gone know, i'm thinking yeah talk now this me. is a stretch Okay, but I'm on board. There's Let's this go. new seven drop planeswalker. Ah, terrible. Um, I know, right? That seems bad, but I think maybe it could fit into that slot. Ugh, you know, I'm willing to try it. I'll play <laughs> test it. So this is busted with Aetherworks. <laughs> like, yeah. Um. I mean, seriously. I I will say, Ulamog dies to more things, way more things. Yeah. Um. However. I'm trying to, in my brain, right now, decide which one is worse. Because Ulamog takes 20 cards from the library. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> and swings 10 li- and exiles two things as soon as he comes in. You're right. That's You're right. really bad. That's really, really bad for the opponent. Um, but I... Oh, man. He does die to so much. I would say that I think mm. this is a comparable replacement. I don't know about better, but I think a comparable replacement. Definitely comparable. Uh, um, this is going to be what Aetherworks needs to keep going, which I really hope it doesn't at this point. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about some things that could stop it. Um, <laughs> they have to print a lot of Walker hate in this yes, next set. A lot. Or ban Aetherworks. And I don't want them to ban. No, um, and that, they've banned a lot already recently. And they just don't really ban in ban in standard. Like, not usually. No, um, these last few sets have kind of been them catching up from things that are too good. They have, and that's the whole reason they're making the whole new department. Yeah, uh, the play design department, so they can hopefully not have to ban things. Um, I mean, they emergency banned a lot of stuff for this, yeah. so I'm really hoping that they don't ban it. Um, but I just. I'm just a little tired. It's I'm I feel like the guy complaining about standard because when Mardu <laughs> vehicles was oh, like the man. only deck, I was like, God, I wish standard would change. And now oh, it's Aetherworks yeah. Marvel, and I'm like, God, I wish Aetherworks Marvel would go. Away. I mean, yeah, but that being said, uh, other decks have beat Aetherworks. Um, oh yeah, is it control is making a resurgence? We talked about that. It yeah, it won some events. It did. Um, it top aided yeah like, very well. A few of the slots were i've always held on to if decks would just kind of change their direction and focus a little Mm -hmm. bit that could they could be more competitive yes this might be a push in that direction yeah if they don't ban i think uh, jeskai control has uh or american control thank you um sorry uh using those new terms um (laughs) those new terms those are a few sets old now um i think uh specifically american control has its viability now with availability to things like cast out yeah. um that can deal with aetherworks marvel uh and also nickel bolus and it's, nickel bolus yeah. um it also gets the i don't remember the name of the card but it's x and a red to destroy x target artifacts um, um I don't either. which i, I know is being played in is it control um mm-hmm. it also does well against things like mardu vehicles for that reason um it's got a lot of hate that it can it can get right. out very easily and so i think uh like maybe a little speculation on my end that we might see some american control decks in the near future uh solely to get things like cast out because it's yeah. unconditional removal basically yeah um, uh, cast out's great <laughs> which is important <laughs> it's very necessary 
Um, but yeah, there is, it's kind of the question hanging in the air and on everyone's mind. Are they going to ban Aetherworks? Um, I don't think so. Actually. I, I don't either. Uh, I think there is a future where they could. Yeah. If people are honestly, this might be me being cynical, are just too stubborn to change a deck list. Yeah. And not add answers to these things. If a deck, I think they will though. Like if a deck just gets to play and then win. Yep. It it doesn't answer anything the opponent does. It can just all out on the marvel and get there. Yeah. <sighs> I know. Trying times. It's gonna my be friend. interesting. Trying times. <laughs> Kev. Yep. That's all we got for content today. This is a longer episode, but we are gonna finish out with our crack a pack series. We're on the hunt for our goal cards. I'm looking for getting into the trials. I'm looking for Combat Celebrant. However, Kev. Yeah. Before we look through these packs that are pre opened. They're pre opened. My bad. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I forgive you. I got over here and there were two open packs on the table and my heart sunk. Yeah. Oh, man. So We've been pre-opening packs and just looking at the rare just to try and save some time. Just to save some time. But well, I'll look at his. He'll look at mine. Yeah. But it's... Uh, yeah. I we, thought we were going to change it all up. We are going to change it up a little bit. Um, so before we get into this, <laughs> before we get into this, uh, these card of the... Or, Crack of Packs are now sponsored by Grand Slam Cards and Collectibles uh, in Rock Hill, South Carolina. If you're near the Whoop. Charlotte, North Carolina area, it's just like a 10-minute drive south. Yes. Um, it's a very, very nice store. They're doing a lot in Pokemon right now. Oh, uh, yeah. They're doing some bo box breaks there, which you can actually buy into uh, from anywhere, and they'll, they will send you the cards that you oh, get. Oh, yeah, that's really um, cool. All their info is in the description on YouTube and on the podcast app. You can click on it there. Check them old. out. Definitely encourage you guys to uh, check them out. They're mm -hmm. going to be sponsoring mm -hmm. us for the next like 18 weeks at yes, least. Yes, we are. Or 18 episodes, I'm sorry. Um, so we're hoping to work with them and uh, get a hold of them for some more content ideas in the yeah, near future. Yeah, we're super excited to work with them. Um, Kevin has uh, been around that store for a long time. Uh, <laughs> when I moved to the area, that was actually the first car shop I went to, uh, yep. to buy a few things. And then originally I sold some stuff there. Uh, it's a very welcoming place. It is. They are helpful. <clears throat> uh, they will, uh, what I like about them, I'll just say real quick is they, especially if I'm paying cash, they will usually give me a pretty fair price. Yeah. Sometimes um, less than I expect to pay for cards. They do a good job about that. They will work it. with you on prices. Uh, a good friend of mine, Clamp, is the owner. Shout and, out to um, Clamp. Shout out to him. You are he the does man. a really good job there. So yeah. we appreciate you, buddy. And uh, we'll be in touch very soon. But with that, yes. we're going to get through these yes, cracker yes, packs. Yes. We've got all the cards here. I uh, I didn't get my gold card. Tell me what you got, though. Uh, I got a oh. Sheltered Thicket, which I believe you opened <laughs> okay. on like the last episode. Sheltered Thicket. Um, this is the green-red tap land. Uh, yep. And you can cycle it for two. It's bicycle lands. There you go. I don't say, really care don't about say, them. Don't say tap land. It's a bicycle land. I don't really care about them. No, I don't. Yeah, they're not fantastic. <laughs> okay. Um, I did not get mine either. Um, I do. I do really like this rare though. Okay. Uh, Plague Belcher. Uh, this is another card that saw a dip in price. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a zombie beast. A five four for three. Two colorless. One black. With Menace that says, when Plague Belcher enters the battlefield, put two minus one minus one counters on target creature you control. Whenever whenever another zombie you control dies, each opponent loses one life. This is great in the zombie ducks. Yeah. But again, it's solid dip once zombies got off the scene yeah. a little bit. So one uh, critical play that I saw this played in um, had some 2-2 two -two tokens out. Mm -hmm. Plague Belcher hit the field, killed a token, opponent lost a life, and you basically just upgraded a permanent, right? Yeah. You've got a 5-4 instead of a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. 5-4 with Menace. Yeah. Um, so this is really good. Uh, probably not going to see much more constructed play. I think in Zombies it's good, but other than that... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, just not fantastic. The minus one, minus one counters really haven't taken off. As much They're, as I thought they might. They, I I think they might be a mechanic that they made for Limited. Just to Maybe make so. it interesting. Yeah. But... I mean, we'll see how, we'll yeah. see how it ends up with Hours of Devastation coming out yeah. in the next few months, but... Uh, this is definitely our longest episode, so we'll That's wrap it fine. up real quick. We had a lot to talk about. We did have a lot to talk Thanks about. Thanks for we hanging hope out. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, a big thank you to Grand Slam, our new sponsor. Um, go check out our Patreon. Go check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the stuff. All the places. All the um, things. Find our, our faces. And our Twitch, which we have recently started uh, streaming on there. 
Um, go check us out. Uh, this has been It Resolves, though. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And we will see you guys t- on tomorrow's episode. Oh, it's month? Yeah! <laughs> Come by for some deck tags. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.